Yo, yo, nicks and bruises, we are back. Shout out to the chat. Yo, black is time. I got a full house tonight. Got Sim in the building. J Shadow in the building. And the delusional Nick fan, delusional one. What's good? Shadow, man. Feeling good. Feeling good. Well, welcome back, fellas. Um, so I'm gonna do this new segment called uh it's like a spotlight series. We're gonna start with OG. Um, kind of just talking about what we expect from him um in this playoff series in the playoffs um you know what we want him to work on i know me and sim been discussing his aggressiveness i think that's one of the main keys um for him and and for us to succeed you know with the with, without randall um and not having all the pressure on brunson but before we get into the og um s- series spotlight series um did you guys see the the new slam cover? Oh, fire! Tough. Fire! See it yet? I didn't even uh, see it. Ooh. Oh, it's, it's it's the uh the David the the <laughs> the Villanova boys. You know what I mean? They all three on the cover. Um, yes, it looks fire. I I, I know fire. I'm a homer because I'm a Knicks fan, but it seemed like anytime the Knicks make the cover of the slam, yes. they they do justice with it. You know what I mean? It it it, it, it looks dope. Um, yeah, it's fire, fire. So, you know, Yo, shout you know, out, shout out to them is, boys for that. What's crazy is you know, I I I get a full disclosure. Like I'm not like a you know I don't catch up on every issue when it drops, so I don't like follow if you will like like to know when it dropped like that. So I saw it I saw it earlier today, and I was like. Is this old? Like, did I miss this? Like, when did this happen? So I didn't have any clue. All I know is I saw it and I sent it out to a few people. I was like, Yeah, you seen this? This is fire. It's crazy. So, yeah, and I definitely slammed it. They great job for the uh creative direction on that. And, and salute to management for bringing the unification and putting other players to the side and bringing the team together that needed to gel right. Yeah. 100 percent um i i wasn't i wasn't um I, I was just like you i'm not aware when it drops i saw it this morning as well and, and had the same sentiments like is, is this new is this old like i ain't never see this i um, right. definitely looking forward to reading reading um the articles and and you know what they what they got to say about that can, um, I, can I add on to that absolutely yo, yo just like speaking of that right just taking like maybe two or three steps back, I'm really surprised that the management has been like kind of okay with these guys green lighting them with the podcast because it's been such a whole tight lip ship, you know, and I haven't, I haven't, you know, been catching up on all of the, the nothing but Nick's platforms, but you know, uh, I don't know if you guys have addressed that issue, but I, I'm surprised. Like the idea that they actually are letting them rock is, is, is a shock. And um, hopefully it's a good sign of um, of management kind of just, you know, balancing the balancing the scale. And I like to give um, World Wide West maybe a little bit of credit for letting this letting this live. But um, who knows? Um, yeah. Before we get into it, a couple of things I do want to add. Um, shout out to Wilson Dang. Oh, um, yeah. Prez out to Nate Robinson. If anybody's unaware, I guess he um, needs a kidney transplant. A kidney transplant and um you, you know it seems to be something very serious like uh time sensitive he needs it Im- immediately um i think that's one thing you know I, I we're not doctors obviously but as knicks fans if we could spread the word at the very least you, you know what i mean maybe the word reaches the right person um and, and, and he gets that that transplant that he needs so definitely um Press to Nate Robinson for sure. I have a close friend that you know that I grow with, play ball with, and um, yeah, he he went through the same. He went through the same, and um, thankfully he was blessed and he was able to uh, to get one, and uh, and and so far he's doing well. So um, hopefully it'll be the same for Nate. That, that's yeah. what's up. You would think, you know what I mean? Like an athlete, you know, pretty popular. I I, I would assume that um, outside of just the Knicks world, um, you, you know, he, he would be able to reach and, and get to the right people to to find a, a donor or, or whatever the case. But, um, again, pray, prayers out to him. Hopefully 
he gets what he needs, gets the kidney and, and could recover yeah. fairly quickly. Yeah, without a doubt. Because, though you know, I mean, the kidney, that's, that's one of your most important organs, man. It keeps your body clean. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, if you don't have good kidneys, you got to go on dialysis. And and, and and if your kidneys fail, I mean, you're talking, if you're not on dialysis and your kidneys fail, you're talking three weeks. You know, because the toxins will take over your body. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, um, a, a friend of mine, one of my closest friends, uh, he had a kidney transplant like two years ago. Mm. You know I mean? He's he's my age. You know what I mean? And he was... um. You know, he had a lot of things going on and 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 a lot of lot of health issues and and uh you know he you know he was on dialysis for about eight nine years or something like that so and that's no joke it. itself no dialysis is not a you know what i mean yeah not a fun process um yeah all right let's i i i feel like joe button wanting want to play like you know some some good music to lift the spirit back up but um you, you had said some, oh you talked about the uh the podcast so let me let me um get my thoughts on, on that i agreed with you initially you, you know what i mean when when i first started watching the podcast the only thing i will say is and granted i doubt I, I don't think they have time to go live you know what i mean but it's it's highly edited you know what I mean? So I'm sure I'm not saying it's edited through the Knicks where it has to go through their filter. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised either. You know what I mean? If if it has to go through a filter system. Um and, all right, you gotta clip that part right there. Yeah, you know, we don't need that right there. But other than that, man, salute to them. Um, I definitely enjoy the podcast. I enjoy um the quirkiness of it. You, you know what I mean? Like and Another thing I had thought about a few weeks ago was just random, like if you had to pick two Knicks to do a podcast together, like who would you, who would you want to see? Um, right off the back, I go with the Bigs. I would love to see Mitchie Robinson and Hartstein do a podcast together. I think that would be yeah, must see comedy, TV. must see TV. Um, but yeah, salute to those guys for sure. Um. I mean, if anybody want to add anything, if not, we get right into this uh, spotlight series and this OG talk. No pun intended, so, but <laughs> you know that's that's what we talk about tonight. All yeah. right, let's get into it. Um, all right, keys. Um, I guess we could all go around the board, maybe name one. Um, your biggest key to success for OG. Um, what would you like to see, and maybe a, a concern. Um, you could do one at a time. We go around the board. Um, I think me and Sim are both in agreement, but we could elaborate. For me, it's really that aggressiveness. I didn't see the game last night live. I watched it late. I watched it three times and pleasantly surprised by his output last night. Um, I think he had four dunks, three dunks in the first quarter, a um, couple threes. Like he really mixed it up. The Knicks made a conscious effort to find him. And one of the biggest things that I noticed in that game in particular was him finding the open space, which was allowing him to get the, to these aggressive uh, drives to the basket. Um, I think that's basketball IQ. So I don't think it's like unfathomable to, for that to continue, especially with, he, with him getting um, more adapt post injury so the aggressiveness if he could continue that um i had said it a couple of days ago i would tell him if he gets within five feet i want a dunk attempt you, you know what i mean like i don't care if you miss it i don't care if, you know what i mean because chances are it, it, it'll you'll make it you'll get fouled and that's what we're gonna need so aggressiveness leading to free throws would be my number one key for OG. And I think that would be a game changer. Um, anybody want to agree, disagree, or or just give a different um sentiment as far as um what you're looking for from OG in these playoffs to maximize our success. And I'll start by saying I agree. I mean, and you know that, Tony. That's for the Knicks to be successful, I think, 
you know, they, they need that other guy that can that can touch the paint consistently. You know what I mean? To be able to kick the ball out so we can get rotation, you know, we, we, we can get perimeter ro 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 uh, rotation on the ball, open for perimeter shots. Um, they need that. And OG is a guy who has some of that ability. You know, I, I can't see OG. I don't want to see OG only taking eight shots consistently, only taking eight shots or 10 shots. To me, he's got to be, you know, within the top two or three players in shot attempts. Brunson's going to be number one. You got DiVincenzo, you know, and then OG. You know what I mean? I think he, he's he got to be aggressive, taking the ball to the basket, uh, trying to create his own shot. I don't mind if he's going to have two turnovers doing it. You know what I mean? Because that means he's taking some chances. He's he's trying to get some things done, but I think the Knicks need that. You know what I mean? Um, I don't think he's going to learn, you know, if he's aggressive, I think he can get to the line more if he's aggressive. You know, he's not going to learn to use his body and create fouls, uh, but just it's something else the Knicks need. They need another guy that can get to the line right now. It's just Brunson, you know, that can consistently get to the line. Uh, I don't know who else the Knicks have right now that can consistently get to the line. We looked at the, the numbers of, you know, guys getting to the line. Brunson is like 6.87 free throw attempts per game. Everyone else is two or below, you know, minus have, Randall, who obviously we don't have. Right. right minus Randall. You know what I mean? And, and I think the Knicks need another guy because when you're not hitting the outside shot, you're not hitting your mid range. You can't score, you know, getting to the line is a way that you can still score. That's why Randall was able to score. That's why Brunson is still able, you know, on, on, on rough nights, still give you 25 to 30 on rough nights because he can get to the line. Uh, you know, that's something that the Knicks lack right now. But for OG, you know, being aggressive, the defense is going to be there, being aggressive on offense, having an aggressive mindset. And, and I think that was an aspect that we did lose in the trade as far as, um, RJ was able to get to yep. the line quickly was also able to get to the line. Yep. So, you, you know what I mean? And again, this is not dwelling in the past, but just pointing out, uh, uh, you know, one of those aspects that, that we did lose um, and, and we got to make up for it somehow. I think he's the best guy to, to kind of make that adjustment where I'm not asking for eight. I don't expect eight, you know what I mean? But if you get, if you get four, you know, four a game, I think that's good. You know, four free throw attempts a game is, is, is good. Um, before I move on to the delusional uh, question for you, Sam, do you have a, a a number of shot attempts that you would pref pr prefer for o OG? Uh, like OG? no less, no less than such and such per game. Uh, for me, for OG, I would say no less than fifteen. I want to take a no less than fifteen shot attempts per game. Yeah, that's what I would like to see. He took 18 last game. I think that's a good number for him. I had him I had him between 12 to 16 shots a game. So I think I'm in, in the same space. The thing with OG, right, uh, is that he's an efficient scorer, though. So unlike others that need to take more shots or um or get to the foul line more, uh, and unlike somebody that we lost that does get to the foul line more, he actually makes the layups when he's by the hoop. So, you know, he doesn't have to get to the line as much because you know what? He's actually making shots. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, if he's being more aggressive and he gets to the line, great. But it, to me, as long as he's, um, you know, getting 12-plus shots a game and he shoots with the efficiency that he's been shown since he's been on this team and and I think that we can expect, hitting a couple of threes a game, I think he's going to ultimately get to the to the numbers that we want, which is he's got to be at 15 points plus per game. And if he's hitting a couple of threes and, and hitting 50% from the field, if he hits 12 to 14 shots, you know, he's going to score 15 points, which is what we need. So, um, but I'd like to see him closer to 20, though. So, yeah, yeah 15 shots a game will probably do that. Yeah, no, I, I agree with everyone on OG being aggressive. Um, obviously, he was out injured. So when he came back, um, he was still tentative with taking those jump shots because I felt that he was still getting used to that. Um, and I believe earlier or well, the last interview, he stated that the elbows feels good. Like it's, you know, he's not even worrying about it. So that's a good sign. I, I believe going forward, he would 100 percent be more aggressive. But I think more important. Uh, then his offensive is it's just his defensive present. Uh, we've been playing small 
you know, with Hart at that four, which was killing us on the boards these last uh, the, that three game losing streak that we had. Um, and we were being out rebound. Just his presence alone, his defensive mindset just kind of helped us the team. But then, of course, he never had a negative uh, plus minus, you know, while he's been on the court. So that's telling you you're playing great basketball, regardless if you're scoring or not. Um, and we needed that, you know, from that forward spot, which also brings Hart to kind of guard the the guards, the smaller, quicker guards. So it it really helps out on all angles just for his presence being on the floor. So as much as scoring definitely takes the load off of Brunson, um, especially when they've been blitzing Brunson almost every play now. Uh, they're hitting Hartenstein and uh, that, you know, middle high post. And then, of course, you got the two wing shooters on the side. So with having another 40 percent shooter and uh, OG on the floor to knock it down with DiVincenzo on the other wing, it's just only going to get better. And I, I got to double down on that because when I watched that Bucks game and I saw how he was slowing Giannis down some, I'm just like, man, listen. We could, talk, we could talk about 18 shots a game all we want. If you slowing down the Greek freak, listen, whatever we take from you on offense is going to be a plus because we know this is a 30 point a game scorer. So if you making his his you know his you know his life difficult and limiting his percentages and getting some steals, I mean, I was like, wow, like this guy is actually holding Giannis down a little bit. So um, yeah, I'm I'm much more concerned and worried that he gives me that quality level of defensive play and we'll figure it out on offense. I mean, I, I can't argue with the defensive numbers. Like, like hands down, I was going to bring up the same thing, not a single game where he was not a positive in the, in the plus minus in, in every game he's, he's played. I think he's like plus 16 per game. Um, like for, for the, for the, his time with the Knicks, which is which is nuts in, in, in itself, um, and, and part of me felt like you know what I mean that's where we was gonna have to kind of that's the way we was gonna have to win defense like strictly, and, and I still agree with that, but I also feel like a couple things. One, as much as Brunson has carried the load, I don't think he can do it for sixteen wins in the playoffs. You know what I mean? Man. <laughs> I mean, so, <laughs> now. but but and then on the, on the other side of that is you know if he has a bad game I, I i don't want that to be the detriment to us not being able to win so we're gonna have to withstand him having a bad game or two you know in in, in these playoffs you know, you know and well, hopefully that's it just two you know <laughs> by comparison though when it was randall a couple years back you know, when the other players were not equipped to step up, I think between iHeart, DiVincenzo, Hart, Deuce, and OG, and Bogdanovich, like, I, I feel Bogdan. like, I feel like the team is equipped with professional NBA scorers that can get baskets. And, um, and, and I, I just want to, I just want to add, add, you know, his on court IQ. When you when you now, I mean, don't get me wrong. Deuce has been getting busy, but OG's IQ though is just, it's a different it's a different level of IQ. And you put him with the IQ and the the chemistry of the Villanova boys and uh, I Heart all in the court at the same time. Like I feel like yo, we've got a actually really smart high IQ one through five on that court at the same time on offense and on defense. And, and I think that's what he brings, not just only him as an individual, but just his adding his piece to the entire piece of the puzzle is um, it, it's just like, you, you can't really put it into words. I agree. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I agree with um, you know, all of that. You know, with, with the B ball IQ the Knicks have, you know, on, on this team now. I still think they need, you know, they 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 need a scoring punch, right? But 
even if Brunson is having a bad game, that's the, that's the good thing about having a guy like Brunson. And, and even when, you know, Randall was there, the fact that Brunson can touch the paint the way that he can, uh, you know, he's always going to be a threat. You're going to have to throw, even if he's having an off night, you got to throw, you know, you, you might have to double team him or whatever is going to help open up other people. You know, the, the issue really comes, if those guys are hitting, we're good. fine. The issue comes when Brunson's not hitting and then nobody else is hitting. That's when you see us really, really, really struggle on or, or Brunson's just having, you know, maybe a little bit less than the average game. You see us really, really struggle because uh, if Brunson isn't killing that mid range and, 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 and things, and then DiVincenzo's off on the three point line, you know, Hart's not hit. I, um, Hartenstein's not hitting his, you know, l- little floater or whatever. And we're just missing shots. Um, we don't have anyone that can get to the line to help mitigate that. Or, you know, we don't have another really one-on-one guy because, you know, when you're not hitting those outside there shots, you now you need another one-on-one guy that can go get you a bucket. And, you know, that's supposed to have been Alec Burks. But. <laughs> and that's and that's where I was going. It's, um, looking, like, it's looking like it's Bogdanovich. Self, Bogdanovich. Self, yeah. yeah. Bogdanovich could be the guy. But, yeah, self-creators. And, and, and again, we, when we had that conversation before, so start we, like I was focusing in that starting lineup because I think Bogey is that guy, um, you you know who could create for himself. You, you, you know what I mean? DiVincenzo is kind of hit or miss. Um, another point I had made up, made um, you know he's capable of giving you twenty on any night, but can he give you twenty on every night? Like, right. like that's the thing with with with, with Divincenzo. Like, we know he's capable of doing it on any given night, but I think we need the consistency of it. You, you know what I mean? Um, and and again, so I agree. We can win games with with our defense, hands down. I'm not arguing that at all. But just to make things a little bit easier on Brunson, take a little bit of load off of Brunson. I think consistency from some of these players that I'm gonna. Uh, do these spotlight series is on, I think we, we're going to need that 100%. Um, and, and, and again, for OG, for me, it's really about aggressiveness because he's a smart enough player that he's going to, he's going to, like, he's not going to give you a, a overnight, you know what I mean? Even with low shot attempts, his, he he makes a good um, percentage of the shots he takes. I do think he got, he has to up the attempts. He got to, uh, up the aggressiveness 100 percent well um, i think with og though like i can feel confident in saying that unlike some people that need to be more aggressive or unlike people that need to be more aggressive that are scared to be more aggressive it's to me i don't think it's it's not a it's not a you know a lack of confidence it's not you know um not thinking he can do it it's like you know i'm worried i haven't done it before I don't feel like it's any of those things. I just think that he plays with, with a high IQ and within the structure. I just looked at, I just looked him up. He's never averaged more than 14 and a half shots a game. So I think for us to think that he's going to average 18 shots a game, you know, um, at this juncture where he's not really trending in that direction, that might, that might be kind of high. And then, you know, what scoring usually slows down in the postseason. So I would say, you know, again, if he's in that 12 to 14 range where he's typically been, but he continues to shoot 48 percent, 40 from three and and plays amazing defense. I, I think I think we're getting I think we're getting what we need. So I guess I would ask this, though. What, what about. What about periods where Pascal Siakam or uh, Kyle Lowry or whoever was not there? Did his shot attempts go up then? Yeah, well, that would be a deeper dive. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? Because like right now, it just in, in my opinion, it's what's needed mm-hmm. for this team. You know what I'm saying? You know, for, for his shot attempts to go up. Uh so I I'd love to know, you know what I mean, when when Kyle Lowry, Pascal Siakam, whoever else, you know, on those teams who were the the, the, the primary scores. What did he do when they were out? And and he's kind of always had scorers at his position. 
with, with within within that um not only Pascal but I mean he was he was there with Kawhi right I mean yep. he was he's definitely there alongside um Rosen the, the, the I mean no well the Rosen too but the the Barnes you know yeah. what I mean so these guys are like interchangeable in a sense position wise and they probably um had to do more of the scoring so again by necessity he may not have been needed to take more than 14 you know what i mean his 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 high number at 14 i i agree with him i think here i think we might need a little bit more but for, 14 is actually a good number you know what i mean like 14 would yeah, be my, 14, my my, my, my minimum you know what i mean that's my yeah. <laughs> You know, I I'd like to see him at that fifteen or above, but it's not bad. He, we we can't have eight. <laughs> no, there you go. There you go. We can't there have it unless, unless he's eight for eight and five for five and three. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> right. <laughs> we're we're four free throws. See you know what I mean? <laughs> we're, we're we're four free throws. Yeah, you know I mean now those numbers is looking looking pretty good. Um, anybody want to add anything else you looking for from OG? Um. Any concerns with, with OG? Um, I, I I'm not. I think I'm past the injury thing. Only the um, hell. But other than that, that's it. The only thing I want to see. I just want. I need to see. I'm looking forward to a playoff poster pin up John Stark style on somebody. You understand what I'm saying? Like obviously it won't be Jordan. Uh, so it ain't gonna be the same. But I'm looking for a postseason poster pin up. You heard? From who? From OG? Yeah, he's the only, he's the who, who else we're gonna get it from? Okay. We, don't, we, don't, we don't got we well, say maybe, maybe maybe Deuce, but we don't really have leapers Deuce, on this. Deuce or Dante, yeah, nah, Deuce or Dante, Dante can do it. Dante, Dante can give you one. Dante is surprising. You sleep on him. Yeah, Dante can give you one. Um, I want to squeeze one more spotlight because I know playoffs is gonna be right around the corner. Um. Squeeze one more in. Uh, I, when I do these series, I'll try to do two at a time. Um, but I'll let you guys kind of pick any anybody you want to spotlight. Um, any individual. We're gonna leave Brunson off this list right now. Obviously, that's the big one. Um, but anybody you want to spotlight, if we'll take a quick vote and and then we'll, we'll pick a guy. We'll, we'll do a spotlight real quick. It would have to be Dante. Dante. I got no objections. Objections. So, um, yeah, Dante DiVincenzo. Uh, for me with him, I would have to start with consistency, right? Um, I don't think he's shy with shot shot attempts. I don't think we gotta worry about that. You, you know what I mean? Um, I don't think he really takes bad shots. You, you know what I mean? Like. If anybody's going to question his shot selection, I would think um, maybe somebody might question the 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 range that he shoots from. But I think he's more than capable. So I think that's nit nick picking. Um, my only concern with his shot is sometimes he doesn't square up. Maybe you know you know what I mean. But even with like, I guess that could could be considered a bad shot. And, and maybe cut those down. Maybe the the consistency kind of um stays. I mean, he's been good. You know what I mean, I, I'm nitpicking with consistency, but when I say, I mean consistent scoring numbers. So, like I said, if he could average twenty, like like he's been doing since Randall went out, you you, you know what I mean. I think that's a um that's kind of all I'm asking for him. Anything over twenty a night is a is a bonus. Um. I think he's solid defensively. I, I think he makes solid decisions. Like, I, I really can't find too much to ask from him other than being a consistent scoring threat night in, night out. Yeah, well, Tony, just just to, you know, give you the, the last 10 game split, he's averaging 23 points a game. He's shooting 48% from the field, 43.5% from three. In playing 38 and a half minutes a game, 76 from the line, four and a half boards, three assists a game, and one and a half steals. Mm. And under last 10 games, 
and under two and under two turnovers in ten last ten games. So I mean, Nick we, picking. It, <laughs> I mean, that, that seems pretty consistent. It, I mean, it, it does. It does. Like like I said, I mean, I, well, let, let's go with delusional first. You 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 said you said Di Vincenzo. All right. Well, what, what 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 would you um, what would you be looking for? So. Like you said, it's as crazy as it sounds. Yes, consistency. Playoffs is a whole different animal, so we definitely need uh, his shooting ability uh, to space the floor to help out Brunson during that time period. Um, but something that I think I want to kind of increase is his playmaking ability um, with those uh, Brunsonless minutes. You know, during that time period, we're we're looking for offense. We know he can get his shot off. You know, obviously during the system, um, but. A little bit more pick and roll possible. Uh, hit the big in that stretch um, with Mitch. A little bit more time because Mitch is probably playing with him during that second unit. Like to see more alley oops during that. You know, Dante can get to the paint. He's probably during the stretch. Um, is maybe the second team that's second player getting to the line during that time period. So if you can attack more, definitely attack, kind of get to the line. But I also want to see a little bit more playmaking. That three assists is telling me that he can do it. Um, so as, as much as we kind of have the ball in, in Deuce hand during that time period, um, I would like to see DiVincenzo kind of lead that more aspect, even though Tibbs is always running plays. We're always constantly running plays. I think Dante can be that, that second kind of playmaker, um, with that second unit. Yeah. It, it'd be good to have it because, um, I don't think many of us want to see Burks out there. And um and he and, ain't playmaking, <laughs> and, 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 and he's not playmaking. So, and we also have seen that Deuce is much more efficient off the ball than on the ball. So somebody's got to handle it. And if anything is my quote unquote concern, it would be that occasionally he is a little lackadaisical with the ball. We saw that last night in the backcourt when the turnover occurred in the game. I'm not sure if you saw that in the second half. And, uh, and that's not the first time I play like that has happened. So um, it's like, listen, it's the playoffs. You're going to have to tighten up. We can't avoid – we can't afford any plays like that ever in the playoffs. Like ever. It can never – it can never happen in the playoffs. So it's bad enough it's happened already. So, um, yeah, so that would be my only thing is, like, to Delusional's point, we need him to handle the ball more. And he has to be more efficient at um, at handling it and setting up other players on the team, because Brunson's going to need a break, you know, and um, and Deuce is going to be the three guard rotation, him, Brunson, and uh, and Dante. So like we got to make it so that Burks doesn't even need to get a shot, respectfully. I guess my question, I guess my question with <laughs> with Dante is, can he be that creator? I don't know if. We, we were having this combo at the beginning of the season. I remember yeah. this. This, 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 was, this was a big question. And you and I, Sim, was on the side of him being able to do it. Being able to do it a little bit. But, but what maybe, we maybe we were delusional. <laughs> right. But what we've seen from him is that he can do it, but he, you know, he, he's he's more that just that three-point shooter from wherever, right? But he, he can do it. He doesn't do it consistently, though. Right. He seems but, but I, he seems not to bring the ball up, ball handler. But once you initiate in the offense to make a move to the basket and can see players, like he's good from there. But we don't need him to bring it up. Yeah. But if you got Deuce, we don't. We definitely don't want Deuce to bring it up. And, and I think I mean what 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 Shuttle was highlighting, which I I kind of agree with, is in that second unit or in them non-Brunson minutes because at that point, Brunson's not on the floor. He might be that best option, <laughs> you know what I mean, to, to, to kind of mean, other than, it, I mean, which I have no problem with, if we're running the offense through Hartenstein, it, like that, that would be the the, uh, the other, um I mean, the argument against it. But even at that one two you know what I mean, it, 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 I don't know who else is really creating for others. And, and, and that is a big um, – you know, a big issue, like, all across the board, other than Brunson, who's been phenomenal, um, especially down the stretch, and picking teams apart, you know what I mean? Like, eight assists, nine assists, ten assists. Like, he, his numbers is, has, his assist numbers have gone up yeah. since, you know, the Randall went out. 
and, and I think more of that is by necessity and 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 because the fact that i mean nobody really nobody else could really just give the ball to go get a bucket you know what i mean you give them the ball and they could finish we we got a team full of guys who could get the ball and finish but i think we only got really one guy that could, you could give the ball and say go to work All right so i mean hopefully we, we we figure it out with you know di vincenzo that would be an aspect I, I don't know how much we can utilize it but in spots i, I think we should be able to and, and and should try to for sure um anybody want to add anything on di vincenzo if not we get out of here nice little short series so i, I haven't come out with the shirt yet maybe i'll talk to the paw father we, we you know we could we can make it happen but I've, I gave him the name a, a while back. I told you, Tony, you know, if you remember, three Vincenzo. You heard? Yeah. <laughs> so, Sam, so we got we got to talk about this merch. Yeah, let's talk about that. Three Vincenzo. Three Vincenzo. Yeah. We got to talk about this merch, Sam. Let's put this together. No. You like three, that? Do you like Vincenzo? That? Yeah. Like Trey, and Trey McBride. And Trey McBride. <laughs> well, he's got a brother named Trey already. Deuce, Deuce Trey. Yeah, he's got, he's, he's, he's got a brother named Trey. As a matter of oh, fact, really? he commented yeah. on Twitter that you know, every time, every time I hear someone call him Trey McBride, he's like, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. um, that's what's up. Um, anybody want to highlight anything upcoming, coming up? Um, look, we got forty-seven victories right now. Uh, three more left uh, to complete the series. A uh, tough game against Boston. Um, but then the rest are winnable. Uh, just want the Knicks to come out healthy, uh, strong, push through. Uh, utilize the bench in these last couple games to you know get these guys going. Um, but ultimately, with Tibbs, see how Tibbs adjust. Uh, we got to figure out who we play in the playoffs period, because um, each of the you know, lower teams are still solid NBA teams that uh, are challengeable, but I think ultimately the Knicks can prevail. Um, and let's just kind of push through. Let's let's get to number two. Honestly, that's that's the goal. Push to number two. Even though we can stay at three and still win, I still think that just having the second best record in the East means something. You know, mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah. So wow. I think we should one hundred percent kind of push for that number two. I mean, it, it means home court advantage in the second round. So, I mean, clearly it means something. But um, I got to say, man, you know, I, I never want to clap for a guy getting hurt, but Giannis out, the remainder <laughs> Giannis out the remainder of the season, I mean, if anybody could blow it, Doc mm -hmm. Rivers could blow it. So I'm looking, I'm looking forward to Doc Rivers, you know, gifting this number two seed. I, I, I Doc Rivers, I appreciate you. And uh, but I ain't gonna hold you though. Those Orlando Magic got me worried. They're playing, they're playing great. And if they uh and if they went out, um, you know, Nickabockers can't afford to lose a game. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the Knicks can't afford to lose a game. Because yeah, if, the, if Orlando wins out, they, they got the Bucks up next. They beat the Bucks. I mean, they got the Bucks twice and somebody and a West Coast team. I think. Listen, all we gotta do is control our own destiny. Celtics, right? Celtics are uh, they're not playing. They're not completely benching everybody, but they're giving them the the twenty minute you know load management versus the um, the you know the not playing load management. Okay. So, okay. So you know, so uh, so yeah, maybe a guy or two won't play. Another guy or two, you know, Al Horford didn't play the last game. I think um, someone else didn't play. Przingis so, was out. Yeah, yeah Przingis was out. So maybe now, maybe they play, and now maybe yeah. Yeah. Brown it, it, out. We, we'll get Tatum and Porzingis and Brown and Brown and rest with fucking with, with Holiday well, or something. Yeah. So, so listen, Holiday on the bench is a good sign. I, I like that idea. I, I never want to see him. He's one of the point guards you never want to see if you don't have to. But um, but yeah, I think all three games are obviously you know winnable with the Celtics situation, resting some players, and you know the Bulls will be fighting for a potential home court. So I don't think that's going to be any walk in the park. And his last two games show you that, yo, the Bulls is nothing to sleep on. Yeah. Oh, home court, home court in the playing, in the playing. Okay, <laughs> I'm like, wait, not nah, nah, they can't. They stuck in it. They stuck with it, but. Yeah, I guess they, we get the nine, they, right? 
they yeah they could be they could be still fighting for that home court for the playing game so you know it, it could be like a do or die type of energy for them that the knicks may not be able to match unless it's win for the second seed and you know tibbs is hey, everybody out there 42 minutes let's go <laughs> that's a fact <laughs> oh nah this was this was great i think next highlight I'm gonna do the bigs. I'm gonna do uh Mitchell Robinson and Hartenstein in case you guys are available. If y'all want to get your thoughts, you know, I mean gather your thoughts on on what you expect from them, what you want from them, what you hope from them. Um I might have yeah. to I might have to cancel all my bookings to make that. <laughs> no Mitch hate, no Mitch slander. You know, wow. this is this is all wishful thinking and and and, <laughs> and uh and high expectations, you know what I mean. But um, Yo, yeah. Just get healthy, Mitch. Get healthy. Get back in the uh, conditioning. We'll break it down for sure. Um, I appreciate you guys jumping in with me. It's another um quick one. Shout out to the chat, man. Yo, black is time. I'll see you in a couple of days.